Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, where we'll discuss and Steve will demonstrate uh, the Excel add-in tool for you. Uh, my name is Sean O'Brien. I'm the president of QuickRate, and as always, I'm pleased to be joined by Steve Huntington. Steve, uh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon, or I guess this morning if you're on the, the West Coast um, still. Uh, I've been working with Sean here at QuickRate for a little over a decade now, and my background, my entire career, I have worked with community financial institutions on everything from uh, M&A and valuation to strategic planning work and capital planning and model design and maintenance. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Steve's going to do all the heavy lifting today. I'm really going to be here to uh, just kind of navigate uh, through the through the slides. So I got the easy job today. But just as a reminder. You didn't tell me that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> just as a reminder, uh, we will send out a copy of today's uh, the slide deck as well as a link to the recording. Uh, that'll probably be uh, not today, but likely uh, on Friday. Um, if you want to ask any questions today during the presentation, uh, go ahead and uh, you know submit something through the chat box or the Q&A uh, function, uh, and we will monitor those and certainly take those uh, either in the midst of the presentation or certainly um, at the end. Um, I think to get things started, so the add-in tool, uh, you know, I think we've, uh, you know, we've been really pleased with the response we've gotten from uh, our credit union clients around Cecil. Uh, you know, we are working towards, you know, continuing to develop additional functionality uh, on the analytical side for our credit unions. Uh, we, you know, tossed around the idea of waiting till everything was complete, but uh, decided that you know, as tools became available, they were probably better off to just get introduced and get out to our audience. So the add-in tool is uh, is one of those examples. It's something that, uh, again, I think you'll hopefully find to be very helpful. Um, and I'm going to let Steve go ahead and begin to demo that, and then we'll follow up uh, with some slides. All right. Well, I was... Um... You, you might want to go do the, the first, slides first, first couple Steve. slides. Yeah, just for a couple yeah. minutes, and then so we yeah. don't do too much back and forth. Sure. Um, so... Yeah, hold on, let me get my um so the way the uh the Excel add-in works when you download it, it's on our website. We'll show you at the end here exactly how you might download it. Um, and then the next time you open up and log into Excel, there'll be a separate tab there called Quick Analytics. And you you'll you'll use your same login credentials as you would for um for Quick Rate or Quick Analytics to uh, to log in, and then you get all this, all these great buttons here. Um, the data that comes from here links directly to uh, our, our financial database. So you do have to be online in order to, to download the data. You have to have an active internet connection. Once you've downloaded the data, it works as, an, as a, it's a regular Excel file, so you don't need to maintain internet access. But if you're refreshing a query or pulling one, you will need to have internet access. In addition to credit union, uh, the credit union financials coming from the Form 5300 call reports that you guys all have to file, Every quarter, we also have a complete and comprehensive database on pretty much all financial institutions, everything from typical commercial banks to bank holding companies, um, uh, valuation market data. So for publicly traded um, institutions, their stock price, their valuation data, uh, we have a comprehensive database of mergers and acquisitions. Um, so you can search for M&A activity that's happened in your neck of the woods that's involved credit unions acquiring banks or vice versa or whatnot, and uh, and see all the details that are publicly available about those M&A fields as well. Um, we also have uh, company reported data and SEC data. So for larger publicly traded institutions that have to file with the SEC, uh, we have uh, SEC templated financials as well as press releases and whatnot from, from other institutions. So it really is very comprehensive and we're excited to, to be able to share some of that data, not just for the other institutions, but also specifically for credit unions with a lot of our credit union customers. Um, that's why we call it the great equalizer for customization. All the templates that we work on that, that we make available to you guys interactively on our website are, you know, they a lot of them come from customer, you know, customer suggestions or ideas, but a lot of them are the way we like to look at data. Um, the Excel add-in allows you to pull 
any fields, organize them in any way over any period for any institutions, and then and then integrate them into your existing PowerPoint presentations or board reports or management presentations or anything else. Um, so let's head to the next slide here, Sean. Um, and we're about to get to the live demo, but the kind of the first way that you can access the data is by you could pull up, let's say, your NCUA peer group, or you can search for other credit unions in a specific geography or asset size. Let's say all the credit unions in California between 50 and $250 million in assets. And as soon as you search for them, then you can add a bunch of uh, any other financial fields you want and do kind of what we call uh, research screening, right? Where you have a whole list of peers or institutions that meet your criteria and you're looking for some performance data on individual institutions or on the group as a whole. So let's go ahead and I'll share my screen and we'll do a little bit of that. I have uh, uh, an Excel file that I created with some of these things already done and a new Excel file that will kind of do some live so we can you can see kind of the before and after and we don't spend um, too much extra time. I'm gonna share my screen here, it is that one. I can see it. like a blank Excel file. It does. All right. So here we are in Excel. I clicked on the quick analytics tab up here. And then this, what they call the ribbon, I guess is what Microsoft calls it now. Um, I've logged in and I'm going to go ahead and search CU. So I click on that. My dialog box pops up again. I'm already logged in and I'm connected to the internet. I can say, Hey, you know what? Let me just look at you, uh, NCUA peer group six, right? Those are the largest credit unions in the country. Everyone over 500 million. Or I can say, what was it I said, California? Let's do what I suggested. We'll choose California and we'll say assets between 50 and 250. And I'll click find credit unions. There's 84 credit unions currently in the state of California between 50 million and 250 million. I'll say, sure, I wanna use those, why not? And hold on, let me try. I might have been logged out for too long. Okay, all right. So I'm going to search for credit unions, California. Do this again. Take number two. There's 84, let me go ahead and use them. Okay, uh, let me go to my other file. I think I have too many different versions of Excel open simultaneously, here we go. Okay, so this is that same exact list that I just created a minute ago. And we have approximately 84 of them. And as soon as I do that, as soon as I add those institutions, I can go ahead and add individual fields. I added a bunch of charge off fields. If I want to add more fields, I click on the next row that's available or the next column that's available and click right on select data. And this is where the magic happens, so to speak. This is where if I click on credit union data, this is where you have access to every single field um, in our database. We've organized it by category. We have highlights, we have balance sheet data, we have income state data, loan, loan composition, uh, deposit securities, yields and costs. Some of those coming directly from the call report and some of them are derived. So this isn't just raw call report data, right? This is where we've we've taken, we've calculated all the ratios, things, um, any um, whether they are net charge offs to average loans, whether it's ROA, all those types of ratios that you're not gonna get directly in a call report. You could get it in an FBR, the FPRs that the NCUA provides, but not in the uh, the raw call report data. So we do have uh, um, access to all those. Asset quality summary, asset quality detail, where we can dig into, let's say just uh, you know first mortgage loans and look at um, by delinquency, by how delinquent the loans are, or by charge-offs, recoveries, um, or even total balance of past due. And so we have a lot of detail. Uh, so we try to organize it as well as we can so that if you don't want 
some of the nitty gritty and you're just looking at highlights, we can click on the highlights here. And these are some of the more common fields that, that you might be pulling. Uh, reserves to loans, um, total loans, net charge offs, net income, ROA, net worth, so some, of those, some of those highlight type fields. I'll go ahead and add a field here and add a field here and I'll use these fields. And Steve, you might just want to point out you're adding those fields simply by double clicking on them. Yes. So what I just did right there is I just chose those two fields, net charge offs for June 30th and net income for June 30th. Um, and I, those are duration items, right? Those are items that are over time. And so I had to choose a duration. Do I want quarterly value, a year to date value, or a trailing 12 months or last 12 months LTM value? I chose LTM value. So there's net charge offs and there's net income. As soon as I added them, it populated that data for June 30th for all, however many of these institutions that we've got here in this list. So it's very easy. Um, I'll click on the next column here. I'll do it again. I'll select more data. This will pop up. I'll go right to the, and you can search for fields as well. You don't have to go through weeding, you know, for, for something that's super, super detailed. Let's say I'm looking for um, junior liens. Um, in the credit union data, um, um, you know, total loan 60 days past. No, that's yeah. Indirect loans first. So lots of ways you can um, search for specific field. Let's say if I want to search for ROAA, I don't want bank data, or credit union data. So there's ROA. Let's say I want year to date return on average assets as of June 30th. And I can, when I click add this field, Oh, sorry, uh, I click on it here. When I double click on the field here, it adds it. And this kind of shows you the list of fields you're gonna add. If you add more than one field, let's just say that net something or other. Um, we'll go to, let's see, net worth ratio. Um, total net worth. You see I'm adding all these fields and if I want to reorganize them, I could bring this one up or bring it down. All that does is kind of, you know, which column is going to be to the left and which column is going to be to the right. You can cut and paste columns and data in here once you're done as well. So this is um, just to remind you. So if I want to use those fields, I click that and boop, boop. Takes just a few seconds. There, it just added those fields as well. So if I came in here and I said, I can, you know, just like any other Excel file now, I can take this field, come over here and cut it and paste it and move it and we're fine. If I wanna change a date, right? If I wanna do it as of a different period, do I have to go and open up the dialog box and all that? No, I'll just type in 331.23. And once I've done that, I'll hit, I'll go over to refresh the current sheet, refresh the data, I hit refresh now refreshing the data and it's going in and refreshing all the data, not just this, uh, this field, but it's checking all the fields that I had in here before. And it's doing it particularly slowly for some reason or another, probably because of the uh, webinar that we're doing at the same time. Typically this is pretty instantaneous, but with everything I've got running in the background, it's slightly, slightly slow. So let's just let finish up here. And I do have a bunch of fields. So once it's done that, you can you can change periods, you can change dates right here um, in the file without having to go. If I want to add another institution, I can head down to the bottom of my list and say I want to add another institution here. I'll go to back to search CUs. Let's say I want to add a specific it's like my institution, right? I've, I've chosen a peer group. I want to add my own credit union down at the bottom to compare myself with these groups. Um, let's go with somebody I know, Wisconsin. And as soon as I type in, I say, find credit unions. There they are. And I'll go ahead and use that credit union. And boop, it just added um, added Wisconsin into the uh, into the spreadsheet. And if I refresh and it'll add them, uh, add their data elsewhere um, all across the other rows as well. So you can add additional institutions, you can add additional fields. Once you've got those fields, you can reorganize them, you can change dates. And then you can do anything you can do in Excel, right? Let's say, you know, if I really, if I want to track my losses over time and compare them with my peer group, um, I can say, well, let me, let me look at the, you know, peer median, the median for all those credit unions in California over the last, let's say, you know, six quarters, right? 
or if I want to do the 25th percentile and 75th percentile. I can then take this data, and if I wanted to create a clean kind of formatted sheet for a PowerPoint presentation or something, well, that's what I just kind of did this morning. I just linked, um, I just took those, uh, those calculations I just did on the raw kind of spreadsheet and put them right here. And so we have a 25th percentile, a median, and a 75th percentile for your peer group, and then our credit union um, for net charge-offs. And I can track that over time. So here's a chart of our, um, the blue bar is our credit union, and the uh, 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile of the peer group is tracked there as well. And if I wanted to change the dates, so I could, I could make these dates here. I can, I can make them come from the formatted sheet. So let's say I just wanted to use this sheet from now on and I wanted to update each quarter, or I just wanted to type in, you know, some new dates here and then have all this data here refreshed. <clears throat> if I, if I type in a new date here and then I use that as a formula to link, link to these, right? Using your standard kind of cell reference, and then these guys will update. And so if I go here and I change this date to, let's say 63. And then I go back um, here. This one's already changed to, where was it? 63023. And then I can refresh the table and then the, um, the chart will, will update, will refresh as well. So there's a lot of things you can do um, to link raw data once you pulled it in this format <clears throat> to, uh, to format its spreadsheets and kind of um, build, um, build peer analyses and relative, relative analyses that way. Now, another, a completely other way to use the tool is what we call using custom templates. And um, this is one that I've already kind of created, but let me go ahead and show you how that works. Um, for a custom template, actually, Sean, why don't we go back to the presentation for just a second, because I have a couple slides that kind of describe that, and then we can jump back here into the Excel file. Sure. All right, let me, I'm gonna disable you here for a second. Do you want me to end this here or you want to keep going? Um, next one. And then next one. We've already done that. And that one. So next. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> advanced, uh, advanced bank screening is something that we haven't added yet for credit unions, but you can already do this for banks and holding companies. If you're, instead of searching for an institution using the same type of query we did before, where we say, hey, you know, what asset size do we want and what, you know, what, what geography is it or what peer group, NCUA peer group is it? If you want to build compound queries, say, hey, I want to see all the credit unions in my state, not just that are between 50 and 250 million in assets, but let's say all the ones that have more than 20% commercial loans and have an interest rate on their mortgage on their mortgage loans of or a yield on their loans of higher than four and a half percent. So you can do like for example, if I wanted, I think this one I built here is if you have a margin greater than five percent and a C and I loans greater than 25% composition. Why you'd want that particular set of queries uh, is anyone's guess, but. It's, it's kind of more advanced um, compound function screening that is available for banks and for holding companies. It's available for you guys to do on banks and holding companies, but not yet on the credit union data. We're working on adding that and we'll let you guys know as soon as that's available. Um, on the next slide, Sean, I believe, if you can go to the next one. Yeah. Um, this just also reminds us that in addition to the bank and the holding or bank and credit union data, we have a full comprehensive list of fields from um, 10 Qs and Ks on the SEC side and valuation data and trading data like tickers and exchanges and um, val um, volume, tangible book value per share, price to book, all that kind of good stuff. On the next slide, formatted templates. This is what I was getting to. So the other way of looking at data, instead of looking at a whole bunch of bank or a whole bunch of credit unions and pulling a handful of fields, what if you just want to pull up, you know, your own balance sheet for the last six quarters, or you want to look at a bunch of asset quality details for your institution or for, a, or for an individual peer and do it over time. So you have a column for each period, right? More like you would see in a standard financial statement. That's what we call um, the formatted or the custom templates. The formatted templates where you can choose right here, you can select a template, a full balance sheet, a full income statement, 
Um, these are kind of pre-formatted templates that we built. We built them on the bank side um, and they're coming soon also for very soon for credit unions. Um, but it's not, uh, we can still create these. You can still create these now. It's just a little bit more, <clears throat> you have to choose the fields that you want as opposed to having them kind of pre-canned into all balance sheet related items or all income statement uh, related items. So on the next slide, we show you what the, uh, the custom templates. Um, okay, so let me head back to the, uh, to the Excel file now. And I'll share my screen again. So if I click on this right here, um, credit union custom templates, I can type in a specific credit union name. Wait, Let's go with- Your screen's oh. not up yet, Steve. Oh, all right, hold on. There we go. There we go. Let me close out. Um, so right here under custom templates, we can click on credit union. And when we do, it'll get this dialog box and we can search for the credit union. I'll just use these guys. So they are with Wisconsin. And once I choose them here, now I can choose any of the fields. Again, this is the entire database of credit union data here. So if I'm looking for fee income, I can choose, I can add fee income. If I want a whole bunch of stuff from the income statement, I'll just go right to my income statement and say, you know, I want total, um, let's say, total interest income, total interest expense, loan loss provision. So if I'm trying to build sort of an income statement type thing, um, you can choose all the fields you want and then you can choose what period you want. Do you want the last six quarters? In which case it'd say I want 330, 630, 930, 1230, 330, 630, that one. So that would be the last six quarters. If I wanna add in the last four years, I can add in the last four years and choose all the periods you want, all the fields you want and then you click download data and then this is what opens up here. I don't want to do it on top of what I've already got here. But if I click that, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to click here to do that. Um, so what I did was just that, right? I chose interest income, interest on loans, int um, interest income on investments, the so total interest income, total interest expense, net interest income, provision, fee income, overhead expense, net income. So kind of a basic income statement. And I have it here for the last five years and the last two quarters. If I were to want to change this to be, let's say 2022, and I hit refresh, that one, I did the wrong tape. Um, <clears throat> you change the date and it would update, it would update the table here as well. And so you can pull all the data you want for your institution over time, or you can do a side by side. <clears throat> and it looks like on a side-by-side -side here, uh, it's the same idea, right? You have one institution or one, ins one period of data for one institution is in a column and you have all the data points that you want. So if I just wanted some financial highlights, let's say for your credit union and a handful of uh, your peers, some of your closest peers, some of the ones maybe that the credit union already knows by name that you already kind of um, informally compare yourself to or formally compare yourself to on a regular basis. You can add those individual credit unions and do kind of a side-by-side -side analysis, download the data, then come in here and kind of, you could either do conditional formatting if you wanna highlight some of the best and worst performers uh, within the peer group, for example, or if you wanted to make any charts, you know, you would just choose what data point you wanna make the charts off of. So really, I'm just giving you examples, um, but of how you might typically use some of this data in a couple different formats. But um, it's really completely up to you because once you have the data, whether you're pulling a bunch, uh, a handful of fields over time for your institution, or whether you're pulling um, data for hundreds of credit unions across your geography or, or region, once you have that data, you can add new tabs, you can link it through Excel the way you would do with any Excel um, data. So I, I can't stress enough, it really does become a, a, a typical Excel spreadsheet when you're done. If you save it, and then let's say you, you email it to a colleague and they don't have the Excel add-in or they don't even have the internet, doesn't matter. Once the data, once you click the download and the, and the data is downloaded, it's done. It's regular data, just like anything else uh, in Excel. And Steve, I just wanted to point out again, you know, I think uh, what you're seeing is, you know, hopefully again, the, not only the power of the tool, but I think the, you know, the other thing that we think of is hopefully you'll see it or be able to deploy it, you know, as a time saver. As Steve said, once you've, uh, you know, built, you know, whatever uh, template you want or use internally at the credit union, 
right? Every quarter you can come in and refresh it and get new data without having to reconstruct, you know, the the the, the spreadsheet. And so again, we just feel like, uh, you know, we know uh, there's, you know, board reporting or management things you might be doing on a quarterly basis. You know, again, this hopefully might find a way to help save you or someone on your team's time, uh, you know, in constructing those. So. Yeah, um, thanks. And again, this is a, in addition to, to credit union data, we also have trading data for uh, for the public markets. So let's say if I added a new sheet here and I clicked on public market, I can do the same thing. I'd say, you know, uh, California and um, assets, let's say 250 to 500, not 250,000, that's not gonna get many results. There um you can choose all the fields you want and download the data and it'll go ahead and do exactly that so there's the handful of um holding company well some holding companies and some uh commercial banks that that are publicly traded and do not have a holding company like pacific alliance and partners bank and it gives me stock price information volume information trading earnings per share all that public market type data um, the same kind of stuff I have here. And again, you can take that data and use it. And we've also got M&A data. So if I add a new tab here and I go to M&A, um, it's asking you range, date ranges, for, right? For when the, when, the, um, when the deals were announced. So let's say I did the last two years. So 2021 to 2023. I don't know why I keep picking on California, um, but I am today. Um, search M&A deal. So this will find all the, all the, deals that happened in the last two years that were announced that had targets or sellers in the state of California. So I search all the M&A data and here they are. It's got announcing date, closing date, information about the target and the buyer, valuation of a deal, like you know the price of the deal is a percentage of tangible book value of, uh, of the seller, um, target financials here, uh, the uh, some sort of um, details of stock related uh, transactions and then, you know, estimated cost savings, EPS secretion, all the stuff that's, we're not calculating all this stuff separately internally. This is stuff that is announced lots of times, not all the time, uh, when a deal is announced. And so all the information that is announced with the deal publicly available, uh, we're able to do. And so we pull up not just bank bank deals, but there's a handful. I think I did some in, I uh, was playing around with it earlier and I looked at Alabama and in the last year, there's only been two, um, two bank deals in Alabama, and they've both been credit unions acquiring banks. So in the last 12 months, um, Sun South Bank shares sold to all in credit union, um, and then First Bank to Alabama One. So you can get, typically there's not as much financial details about the deals available when you're having credit unions acquiring banks and whatnot, but uh, we do have all that, uh, we warehouse all that information as well. Sean, anything to add on that? Uh, not there. We did have a question come in. Uh, sure. How will updated versions be deployed? Will we receive notifications to download the updated version? Okay. Uh, um, yes. And uh, I'll give you a great example of that. Um, it just happened uh, yesterday. <laughs> so when I was pulling it up, we, um, we have new versions. And uh, every once in a while, what it'll do if I log out. Let me, let me try this. I don't know if it'll happen or not. Yeah, when you I, actually, yeah, I was going to say, when you logged in this morning, it, it popped. Yep. So. so I'm doing my regular login. It'll say, update to new version. There's a new version of the add-in template available for installation. You are using the one from September 26th. I thought pretty current, not current enough. There is a new version available as of the day before yesterday. Um, and so to do that, you would just close out Excel. And once you do, once you close Excel, hold on here. here we go. Um, you head back to the login um, to the website and then right here in your login, your first login page, right? Where you can go to the Cecil tool if you have access to the Cecil tool where you can access these other things which we'll go over very briefly here in a minute or you can just click on the Excel add-in tool. And when you do, it'll remind you that there is a brand new version um, that was updated just the other day. And if you have a 64-bit um, computer, you can ask your IT people if you don't know, 
the use that version. This is the 32 bit version. I had to ask, um, I've got a 64 bit version. Um, and uh, you can click on the new version right there and download it. And then when you open up Excel, uh, the next time you open it up, it'll be automatically uh, updated. You don't have to do anything else. This just over overwrites the older, the slightly older version. So it'll it'll uh, it'll remind you when that happens. Now, typically when we do updates to the add-in, it, it you know if you have something important you're working on and you open it up and it says you have an old version, um, it's not it doesn't break your files. Your files don't become useless. You can still update them and everything else. But at some point you might down the road if you don't update it, you may find some functionality. It might you know stop updating or you'll see something not work. It'll, it'll pop up with an error message saying hey you need to download the most recent version. But it's not going to corrupt your files. You're not going to lose the, you know the files. And if you've done a lot of work on a file that you update each quarter using the add-in, um, you just um, update to the new version and it works with the Excel file. So, open and see, you may just want to point out while we're on this page, the link to the, 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 the user guide there as well. Just to... Yeah, um, yeah, there's a quick start guide here. So you can open it up right in um, um, through the interactive tool through our website, which kind of talks about how to do a lot of the things that we're doing here. Um, there's also a version of it right in Excel. So when you're in Excel, um, quick start guide right here. So if you click on that, it's also going to do the same thing. It'll open your browser back up or will it open up in Adobe? I don't know. It opens yeah. up in Adobe. Either way, um, <clears throat> it opens up that way. So um, again, um, let me see if there's any other particular templates that I showed here. That's just your income statement over time. What's that? Public trading data, m and I think that. Oh, and this is just another example of, this is a this is a template that we have that a lot of our um, um, community bank customers really like to use from our website that pulls all of their, their, uh, their ratios that are, that you can compare objectively, either higher is better or lower is better. Right. And kind of sticks those ratios within a, what we call a heat map, a performance heat map or a performance matrix compared to the peer group. And this is the type of, I didn't actually build it in here, but this is the type of thing that you could do very easily with the data that we have where you have, you know, a row with your own data and then all your peers and you can calculate your percentile rank in certain performance measures and then put different visualizations around that. So you can kind of easily and attractively um, communicate with the board or the management team or, or whatever audience you'd like, how your institution is, you know, performing compared to peers in a very visual way in some, in some kind of, you know, overall highlight financial type data. Um, I think if there's no questions specifically about the workings of a tool here, I think we can head back to the to the PowerPoint for a minute, Sean. And so get, just again, you know, uh, as we're going through these, you know, we, we will make a copy of these slide decks available so you have them for yeah. your reference. Uh, I think this is just kind of what you again covered, Steve. Some screenshots. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you don't want to watch through the entire uh, video of today's thing and you want to print something off, um, a lot of a, I, I've got a lot of the screenshots from there right in here. Just some other tips about how to use the tool. There is a uh, there's a bug button right in there. So if something stops working, um, you can click on the little red bug uh, and it'll uh, you can report an issue and say, hey, I was trying to update something and it didn't work or these values don't seem right. And that goes directly to us. And then we can take a look and figure out uh, uh, what's going on and get right back to you. But the quickest thing to do always, it's like I tell, uh, just like I tell my, uh, <laughs> um, uh, my dad is, uh, if it's not working, the first thing you always do is close out, turn off and turn it back on, right? So easiest thing to do is if, it's, if, if something doesn't seem to be updating or you're getting an error message, close Excel out completely and then reopen Excel and re-log into the add-in and that solves uh, just like most IT issues, it seems these days. And my internet issue yesterday <laughs> on my router uh, to uh, give it a quick restart. And that solves a lot of them. Um, did want to spend just a couple minutes on some of the uh, other financial information that's available for credit unions uh, directly on our interactive page. So we showed you how you can get all that data directly in an Excel environment. There are a couple other ways that are already we've already formatted and spent a good deal of time laying out that you can get them interactively through our website. So I wanted to spend just a second doing that. Um, 
Sean, do we want to briefly go or just leave a couple slides yeah. in for this? Yeah, I think, again, with Cecil, many of you are Cecil subscribers. For those of you who are not, we just wanted to, again, really kind of leave some placeholders uh, of these. You know, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on these, but just suffice it to say, uh, this is another tool that we have. But now we do want to touch in uh, on these other analytical uh, kind of yeah. top down approaches, uh, credit unions at a glance being the first one, Steve. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll go ahead and sh I think I'll go ahead and show that. Um, yeah, I'll stop it. Me, yep. Yeah, let me um, pull that up here and I'll share my screen. So for uh, for all of you who are already Cecil customers, I'll uh, I'll spare you going through the Cecil solver again. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you've already heard me talk about it so much. Yeah, uh, share my screen here. All so right, just the see Cecil it. solver yeah. there. But if I click on credit unions at a glance, and this is kind of um, I, I call it sort of a poor man's version of the Excel added, right? Because <clears throat> this yeah. looks like that where you, I've I've said, hey, I want to look at all the all the uh, credit unions in in my state or my region, and I want to look at some a handful of of financial type um, um, fields. You can click on a field and you can sort by it. Let's say. Um, you know, if I want to see, who, you know, who is in my, who is in my NCUA peer group in California, I'm in peer group five, which is, you know, um, 250 to 500 million in, uh, in assets. So you can see right here, this is exactly the, however many institutions are in that there's about 20 of them or so that are, uh, that are in that NCUA peer group five in, in California. If I want to sort by, let's say ROA. I can click on it and then it'll sort this. Um, I'm sorry, that's an interest income. Um, I'll scroll to the right here and get ROA. There we go. And so I can go high to low or low to high. Somebody's got a 5% ROA. That's pretty impressive. Um, and down here we have some summary statistics, statistics uh, maximum, minimum, average, and median. So it's just kind of a quick way to, to get an idea of how some of the credit unions in your neck of the woods are performing. We're working on adding some additional functionality to this as well, so you can do some more slicing and dicing, so to speak, of the fields or the um, um, or the, the the universe of institutions. But we wanted this kind of be just a large universe, so you could quickly scroll around and find institutions that you're looking for and look at some of their performance trends. And you can export this, right? No matter where you are on our site, you're always one button or um, from an export to PDF or Excel. Um, so here, if I click on export, I can export this tool and it's going to go ahead and export that to Excel right here. Uh, if I want to print it off, I can do that also. Um, and let's see, it, you'll notice that every one of these names of a credit union is a link. And so if I click that link, let's look at um, Santa Barbara Teachers Credit Union. If I click on that, it's going to bring us to their homepage. So we have a financial kind of homepage, which has a map and a branch list, and then some summary financial statistics for every credit union in the country. You can, you can find it for your credit union. You can search for another credit union um, using that tool. I'll show you a different way. You can just directly search for the credit union you're looking for, and it'll give you some of their information about their branches. Um, and it'll um, you can also scroll down here. And this is just kind of a, a financial highlights table. Not only does it show it over time, you can change it if you want to look at the last six years as opposed to the last six quarters or year to date periods. Um, you also can see your peer group median and your percentile rank. So for um, profitability, let's say we're looking at um, overhead expense, average assets, right? Um, and by the way, I can click here and I can see exactly um, what those, uh, how the, where the formulas are coming from. Um, and how these how some of these are calculated. We're starting to add in formula definitions. It's an ongoing thing that we're working on, but uh, we'll get to all of them at some point. But you can see not only what your ratios are, but what your peer group's median is and what your percentile rank from zero to 100 is compared to the peer group. This is compared to um, NCUA peer group five in California. So if I wanted to, to go broader, say, hey, you know, I can look at all, I can compare myself to the entire national NCUA peer group uh, one through six, or I can just compare to my region or I can just compare to my state. So it depends on how local you wanna get with your peer group comparison. Um, and when you change the peer group, it'll recalculate the peer group medians and then what your percentile rank is. Percentile ranks are not, are, are, uh, are not 
you know, 100 isn't always better, right? If you have the highest net charge off ratio, you're going to have a percentile rank of 100, which is not a good thing. So it's, uh, they're not, uh, they're not subjective, right? Um, they're just showing you whether you are the number, your number is lower or higher, whether that's good or bad compared to the peer group. But we're able to get this from here. If I wanted to find it for my credit union, when I, as soon as I log in, I can either just click on our name or I can click on my credit union and that'll bring up that financial highlights table for, for our credit union. If you want it on somebody else's, instead of going to the credit union to the glance, you can just do an advanced credit union search. And that just said, uh, you can type in the charter number or the credit union name, or you can type in a city and then you can find it from the city. Um, if I'm looking for West Wisconsin, keep picking on them, search. There they are, and I can click on that and get right to there. They've got 20 branches and they're a pretty good size. Um, there we go. Um, and let's head back to the home page here. I think that that is. Um, back there for one second. Just want to point out a couple other things. If you don't to worry. the my. Or just go to my credit union. Yeah, just sure. Um, just a kind of couple of reminders. Uh, you know, even on these pages, you can export to Excel or create a PDF uh, with the the information. Uh, and then secondly, you know, I can I think one of what we try to do for you here is to show you your credit union's absolute numbers over time and then give you a quick comparison to to a peer group. So, you know, again, uh, that's really kind of the foundation of what we're trying to to present this for. Uh, again, make things easier for you. But then, as Steve is demonstrating, right, you be, you can take everything that you see on the screen and you know either export it to an Excel file or PDF, or um, you know get a hard copy by printing it. Um, um, Steve, uh, there's a question just on the peer groups. Sure. How are they broken down? So the peer groups right now are based upon the NCUA's uh, NCUA's designation. Peer, uh, the NCUA sticks everybody into one of six peer groups, and they are numbered one through six. Nothing super creative. The uh, peer NCUA peer group one are all the credit, the smallest credit unions. Everyone that's under two million dollars in assets. Their uh, NCUA peer group two is two to ten. Then ten to fifty is three. Fifty to one hundred is four. 100 to 500 million in assets is peer group five. And then everybody over $500 million in assets is peer group six. Um, so it's kind of like the, if you're familiar with the bank uh, on the bank side, uh, the UBPR reports, right? They're kind of like your FPR reports. The UBPR, there's a bunch of different peer groups, right? National UBPR peer groups and every bank uh, in the country falls into one of those UBPR peer groups. They have some weird choices for how they slice and dice <laughs> Their, uh, the, their peer groups, the NCUAs are probably actually a little bit cleaner uh, with one through six, but that's that's how they're done. And if you don't like comparing yourself, if you think that's pretty meaningless um, because of your particular size or geography, that's when you go into Excel and you pick the specific institutions that you think would make a better peer group. And then you go off of that. You can pull all the financials off of them and you can start doing analyses compared to a much more intelligent local peer group than the NCUA would ever be able to provide for you. So it depends on your audience, right? If you're if you're if you're defending Q factors for something like CECL, like an ACL calculation, the NCUA may be very comfortable with you using their peer groups for your, you know, for your uh, comparative uh, reserve levels um, in your in your Q factor um, adjustments. But if you're kind of if you're working with your board or, uh, or your management team and you really want to compare yourself to other similar sized credit unions in your neck of the woods, um, then it may make a lot more sense to build a custom one in Excel and do. Uh, do you want me to take it back to the slide, Steve? Anything sure. Else you want to cover? I think uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, jump back here into the slides. Um, so again, we talked about credit unions at a glance. Steve showed you, um, you know, on the interactive pages. Again, this just kind of summarizes what you're seeing uh, on those unique individual uh, credit union homepages. Um, just a reminder, you know, again, uh, you know, we're uh, you know, it's our intention to continue to build out functionality uh, for our credit unions. Um, you know, we do have offerings as well on, on the IntelliCredit side. We have a portfolio analytical tool that we'll be demonstrating here in, in the coming months. I think everything we're trying to do is, 
you know, take available data, whether it's public or in the case of IntelliCredit, your own credit unions uh, data, you know, put them into dashboards, put them into tools that are easily, more easily accessible, uh, hopefully easy to use, affordable, uh, and again, just give you more resources uh, without the, you know, the added burden of, of, uh, of you know, hiring consultants or, or staff to, to do it. So, you know, we really think, uh, you know, the, the add-in tool is a, a very good example of that. Uh, we'll continue to demonstrate and talk about applications. If uh, certainly, uh, should you decide to, you know, move forward with this, you know, and there's reports that you're trying to do, we can certainly be consultative about, you know, and trying to assist you getting started. So again, we're here to try to just make, make things easier. Um, you know, as Steve kind of pointed out, we're pulling data from a number of different sources. Um, and again, all, all designed to, you know, the, on the belief that, you know, it's better for us to aggregate information and for you to analyze information. And so that's really at the heart uh, of what we try to do and are going to continue to do to try to bring you some solutions uh, that hopefully you'll find helpful. Um, uh, we'll, we'll open it up for questions. I'll leave this up here. Uh, you know, we have our next installment of Coffee Talk uh, a week from Friday. Uh, our dear friend Paul Allen from Salt Marsh is going to join Steve and I. Uh, we'll talk through the third quarter, just talk about things Paul's seeing um, on the audit side and, you know, and would want you to be prepared from, from the audit side. Um, so that'll be a, a week from Friday on the 20th. Um, I don't see any additional questions or chats. Steve, any uh, any final thoughts or words for our, for our, our, our folks today? Um, um, nothing comes to mind. Hope to see you guys at our coffee talk next, next Friday. Bring your, bring all your questions for, for Paul. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking time to, uh, to join us today. I hope you found the information helpful. We will send out a link to the recording as well as the, uh, the slide deck. Uh, if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to us uh, at info at quickrate.com or call us or just reach out to David and Jason uh, they'd be happy to talk to you more about the the add-in tool uh, and, you know, certainly uh, with any questions you might have. So uh, thanks again. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. And we will uh, hopefully see you soon or even next Friday on the on the Coffee Talk. Thanks, everybody. See you.